Hello everyone and welcome to my second video about encryption. If you haven't seen my previous video, pause it, go and watch it because I explained some concepts in the previous video and in this video we are just going to put them in practice and write some code about that. I have a class here, program.cs and in the main menu I have two parts for just saving time I wrote everything here. I have a text that I want to encrypt. For encrypting, I need a key. For symmetric algorithm, I need just one key. This key can be a text. You can use whatever you want, but you need to keep it safe. In my project, I usually generate one or two GUIDs and combine them together, and it will be my key here i just wrote something here but suggested you to use a guid i created a class symmetric encryption it has encrypt method and decrypt method we pass password and the text to this method and the result will be the encrypted value let's go to the file the first thing you see here is using sha256 hashing algorithm we are talking about encryption. Why a hashing algorithm? The reason is when you are working with a password and the password is a text, you are not passing this password to database or to other security algorithm that you have. You have to, you must hash this password first and then send it to the database or use it in some of your algorithms. Using this command, SHA-256, compute hash, I am just generating a hash version of my password and I'm going to call it key. Most of the security algorithm, they just use array of bytes. They cannot use and work with a string or files or anything else. If you want to use them, you need to convert everything to an array of bytes bytes and it is the reason that here i'm using the encoding utf8 get bytes can you remember in the previous session we talked about encoding encoding is just a different presentation of the same content and this text will be presented here as a byte of arrays and we have key now it is time to use one of the symmetric algorithm that .NET supports. I personally use AES algorithm, which is a nice one. AES accepts a key. It has a mode which is by default CBC and the CBC stands for cipher block chain. You need to pass one IV, which is initialize vector to it as you can see here i just created an array of byte with 16 items inside the array i haven't assigned any value to any of them which means that it is an array with 16 bytes and all of them are assigned to zero let's explain it from bottom to top I am writing something using this stream writer. This stream writer is using a base stream. The base stream is the crypto stream. Crypto stream is responsible for writing or reading something on its base stream, which means that I have another base stream, which is my memory stream, and the algorithm that this crypto stream should deal with to compile, sorry, to encrypt or decrypt my data should be specified here. This is AES algorithm, and we are going to create one I crypto transformer and pass it to it. And the mode is right because we are going to write in the base stream, which is the memory stream. Then the writer is going to write something in memory stream, but in between, between this write, it is going to have a transformation as well. Then eventually, I need to write down this memory stream on my hard drive 
or just convert it to an array of byte and send it back to my application. In the program now, I have the encrypted text. I'm presenting this encrypted text based on the base64 string. It is an array of bytes. The best way to present arrays of bytes is to convert them to the base64 string. I'm going to show the length of the original text and the length of the uh, encrypted text. And then I try to decrypt the text. I need password as well and the encrypted text to decrypt it. Let's go to the code and see how it works. First, we need to hash the password and create a key. We need to set the key, we need to set the mode, and we need to set the IV, uh, which is just an array. By default, it is using a block of 16 bytes. And here we have a memory stream. This memory stream will be passed to this crypto stream as the base stream. And we are specifying that what algorithm is responsible for this transformation for us, which is AES. And the mode here is read because we are going to read from memory stream. And we have a reader. This reader accepts a base stream, which is this crypto stream. Oh, I forget to mention that this memory stream accepts the array of byte as well. And it is going to read this memory stream to end. But between the memory stream and a stream reader, there is a transformer, which is responsible for encrypting and decrypting for me. Here we are just decrypting. Let's run the application and see the result. This is the encrypted message. Yeah, you cannot, you cannot understand it at all. And if I run it for a thousand times, it will be the same. LX, it starts with LX and ends with Z7. Let's run it again. It is the same because as I explained, it is a one-to-one -one function, which means that for a specific input, always and always it is going to generate one specific and one specific output. The original text, the length of that is 36 bytes, but the length of the encrypted data is 48. The length of the input and output of this algorithm are not the same. And the original text is do not forget to like and subscribe. And the decrypted text is do not forget to like and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to my channel right now, just click on subscribe, hit the bell and like this video. Okay, good. Let's go back to the code inside the program that CS just let's be sure that the text is exactly what I wanted. Yes. And here we are showing the original text and for decrypted, we are showing the decrypted message. Symmetric algorithms are funny and nice, but they can be complicated as well. If I go back to the code, I will see that I have a mode which is cipher blockchaining. I have an IV. What are those? Let's go back to the presentation and see what are those concepts. For EAS cipher block chaining, we have data first, and it is going to encrypt the data based on the blocks of data that we have inside this file. What I'm telling you here is not 100% accurate. I'm simplifying it and not explaining it in detail because if I want to explain it, it needs three months and a semester in a university. You need to learn so many things. I don't have that knowledge and we don't have that time here. Then I'm going to make it as simple as possible just to understand it. We have a data here and this data contains a block of 16 bytes arrays. As an example, this data, this text, this file, it has four blocks. What CBC does is to start encrypting each block using the key. The first block is encrypted using the key 
and the result is 16 bytes this is not exactly 16 bytes but for the sake of simplicity let's assume it is 16 bytes for the next block we not only use the key we also use the previous block as well then for the first block we just need one key for the second block we need key and the encrypted value of the previous block which means if you want to encrypt all blocks you need to start from the first block and add the encrypted version of the first block for the second one and for decrypting that it will be the same for the next block we have the value of the second block for generating it we need to use the key and the previous result of the previous block yeah and go on what we used in my application let me go back to my application here is just creating one iv for it and the iv is empty an empty array what is iv let me explain it and then you will realize what is an iv the problem here is the first block because the first block is just secured and encrypted using a key it is not a vulnerability but it is not that safe what if we introduced another block which is not a part of my data and tell the algorithm to encrypt the first block using the key and the 16 byte array value that i provide you with and then you can just throw it away because it is not a part of data that i want you to encrypt it for me okay and it is the result let's go to the eas initialize vector or iv we have a data which consists of a lot of blocks and each block is 16 bytes we generate an iv which should have the size of the block that we are using for chaining which is 16 bytes which is red the data is green algorithm need to have not only data but also this iv as well because the first block should be encrypted using key and this iv block after encryption we have exactly the same blocks the same number of blocks and this iv is not included into the result the encrypted result for decrypting we need this iv as well how can we pass it using the data should we share the key and iv to the place or to the user or to the application that wants to decrypt the code no we shouldn't do that mostly we save the encryption data encrypted data sorry using the iv that we have an array place the iv at the beginning of the array we know that the 16 first byte of this data this file is my iv and the rest is my data let's go back to code and see how it works let me just comment it out and uncomment this part comment it out and uncomment this part and do the same here and check uh, what is happening instead of creating an iv and pass the value to it which is something like an aesthetic key i am generating an iv it is a random iv that i don't know what is that i am generating the iv and this crypto transformer is using the key and this random iv when we write the encrypted data it is time to combine this iv this iv with the result of the encryption and how do we do that 
really easy i have a method this method generates a result the result the length of the result should be uh, equal to the length of the iv and the length of the encrypted message as you can see here i'm copying iv to the beginning of this result from index 0 to for the count of the iv and copy the encrypted data at the end or after this iv and return the result and for decrypting first we need to extract this iv from the encrypted data and how do we do that easy we create iv byte array byte we extract the first 16 bytes of this encrypted data and we put the rest of the data inside the encrypted data and return a tuple here we will get it and use it let me run the application again and see how it works great it is working but what will happen if i don't have this first iv in the cbc mode uh, let's try it let me just comment this part and uncomment this part and instead of storing it i'm going to return the normal one then i am encrypting this text using a generated iv which i don't know what numbers are that and try to decrypt it with an iv which all items of that are equal to zero let me set a breakpoint here as well and run it here let's see what is my iv if i go to that i can see that i have a variety of numbers here good but here what is my iv all of them are equal to zero and what can i expect here okay let me just sometimes it happens because what it is trying to render on the screen it has some special characters which does some funny things but in general it should be something like that can you see the first block of data couldn't be decrypted or deciphered let me count for you from this d until this o it should be 16 characters 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 and 16. the first block couldn't be deciphered or decrypted okay now we know how to encrypt using aes algorithm what is initialized vector and what is cbc cipher block chaining it was all for this session do not forget to like to subscribe my channel in the next video i'm going to explain how to use a symmetric algorithm using public key and private key and in the fourth video we are going to have a deep dive into how to use private key and public key for jwt